miles out to sea, you wonder what the hell is that big yellow glow in there? The local Aboriginal name for the, for the area was Parichi Hurong, and the translation of that is the spirit that mocks you. I sort of feel that's the case, because no matter how important you think you are, there's always something around that's um, much more important. South from Victoria State, the Great Ocean Road winds along the Pacific coast. It offers a spectacular scenery featuring crystal clear water bordered by a stripe of spotless sand. At the end of Australia's most beautiful road, the ocean swell comes crashing down against high limestone cliffs. The Twelve Apostles, gigantic pillars of stone, rise above the sea in Port Campbell's National Park. I'm Philip Eunice. I've lived in Port Campbell all my life. I've always had an interest in the ocean, whether it be sailing or boats. Morning, crew. Morning. Let's get out of here. I do own the charter boat in Port Campbell at the moment. I have done for 12 or 14 years. So the best way to see the 12 Apostles and the Lockhart Gorge precinct is by boat. It is an experience that's unique. So by doing the, the tour on, in a boat, you are actually below the cliff line and you're looking up at these majestic stacks and cliff faces. You see the bits and pieces that are falling off. As we're going in and around the cliffs, the perspective, the views change dramatically. You see the apostles, stacks, appearing over there and from behind the other one. It's all a new experience as we travel along. That's what makes it a memorable trip. When the conditions change, the experience changes and it can be quite challenging, uh, wet and up and down and bumping and smashing and waves coming over the boat. But that's all fun, but there's no, nothing dangerous about it. It just adds to the experience. In the end of it, it's the experience that matters. OK, crew, well, I think it's time for us to be heading back. We've got a front coming in here. It's going to be wet and windy, so just hang on. Just make sure everyone's hanging on. Southern Ocean we're dealing with. It's not a lake. It's one big swell generator, and it can come any time. But conditions can change dramatically as we've experienced. Oh no, this is not too bad. It can get a lot worse than this. Right, I got you. When the sea refuses visitors, it's possible to discover the area on foot by following the coast. What we're looking at when we go out there is limestone cliffs. The limestone was laid down under the seafloor 30 million years ago. It's a special place for me. When this is calm on a calm day, there's little rock pools all through here. And this is actually where I learned to swim as a, you know, I don't know how tall mum used to bring us down here as kids. Obviously not today, there's no swimming today. It's quite dangerous when it gets like this. We have to remember that 10,000 years ago, the coastline was two to four kilometres out to sea from where it is now. The limestone, sheer cliffs, fresh water again plays a big part in that because as the water runs over the edge of the cliff, 
it finds a crack, seeps into the crack, dissolves the limestone, and you get what they call slab erosion. So the obvious ones are the wind and the waves are causing erosion, but the, the more subtle one and the, a, a big influence is fresh water, which dissolves limestone. And as the waves wrap around a point, they change direction and they'll, down the headland, they'll gouge out the limestone where it's softer, eventually forming an archway. And then over another period of time, the archway falls in and you're left with this stack that's as we've got out at the 12 fossils. That's elephant rock. You see there's an archway through there. There used to be an archway down onto this little stump down the bottom here with another tunnel through. I think it fell down the archway in about 1943 or something. I know in my lifetime I've seen three or four stacks fall over, but I've also seen three or four stacks made from different caves in, you know, from the erosion process. Yeah, it is a dynamic coastline changing all the time. It could be in 10 minutes, it could be in 10 years, or 100 years, we don't know. But I do know that it's going to fall off. The cliffs are yellow. When the sun shines on them, that yellow is spectacular. In the morning it's one colour, in the afternoon it's a different colour. Miles out to sea, you wonder what the hell is that big yellow glow in there? In Port Campbell, we do get some pretty severe conditions, but it is a nice area to live in. The local Aboriginal name for the, for the area was Parichi Hurong, and the translation of that is the spirit that mocks you. I sort of feel that's the case, because no matter how important you think you are, there's always something around that's um, much more important. Smaller than Ireland, Tasmania is a wild island that belongs to Australia. Before European colonisation, Tasmania was but a huge forest. At the end of the 18th century, England forced colonisation by deporting thousands of convicts. They were to build Australia and would, at the same time, make some room in the English prisons. And so in the southeast part of the island, Port Arthur became one of the toughest labour camps of its time. The unlucky ones were condemned to hard labour. The situation worsened when a new prison system was implemented, full sensory deprivation. Prisoners were locked in solitary confinement 23 hours a day and kept their chains when going for a walk. Many prisoners became mad and to deal with this, a psychiatric ward was built. Australia accepts this painful past by honouring the memory of the victims of this dark period. The asylum for mental patients has been turned into a museum and it's now possible to visit this location with its bleak and violent history. Once when visiting Port Arthur, the novelist Mark Twain wrote, everything about the place was a discord. Heaven could be found right next to hell. 